Time with Herman and Sharon. And, and, and introduce Autumn Miles. <laughs> Did I scare you? No. <laughs> good, to hear, good to have you. Thank you for having Hi, me. Mrs. Sharon, good to have Thank you. Thank you for having me. This is your backyard. chair right here. Thank you so much. I'm going to seat you nice. in this exclusive Thanks. backyard barbecue. No, I love it. <laughs> I love your ring. By the Thank way. you so wow. much. Goodness gracious. <laughs> Did you see that video, folks? She has a video you've got to go to autumn miles if you if you have an iphone and just look up her name you will be blessed you will be surprised and we looked at one yesterday that yeah. she comes out on screen and she does not have any makeup on <laughs> and the guys here go i like that i love I, it yeah why did you do that i do it all the time all the time Hey, that's who we are. I'm, you know, I don't wake up full glam. I wake up, my breast stinks, you know, you, you look a little crazy. And I think that's real life. People are drawn yeah. to real. It like, is. they see they see themselves in me when I look crazy. So, you know. That is neat, though. I mean, you right. you just like, right. all the veneer is gone. Yeah. All this gone. is me. All gone. This let, is me, me. let me tell you about this. I got to be careful about what I say about what, but you, but you are very attractive. Thank okay, you. Because you know today you could get in trouble with that. You <laughs> Thank could, you. You could go and turn me in and say, you know what he said to me on the air. <laughs> I won't do that. Okay. <laughs> Thank okay. you okay. so much. He said I was attractive. I think there's more to that. Uh, Autumn Miles is the founder and CEO of the Blush Network. Really? Mm -hmm. Blush Network. I yeah. Like that. Man. It's a thing. <laughs> it's a thing. A conference ministry dedicated to spiritually changing the way women think and live. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So you, so you get up on a platform with a whole bunch of women? Mm -hmm. I get up on platform and speak to a whole bunch of women. And our whole mission since the inception has, to, has been to spiritually challenge. Um, I think in, in today's day and age, we need to be challenged yeah. in what we're thinking. We need to be challenged to go deeper, to get in the word. Mm -hmm. And I, I do that. <laughs> I it's, try, at least with God's word. And you're from Dallas, Texas. Yes, yes ma'am. She is the host. <laughs> I could tell. <laughs> of the Autumn Mile Show, yes. a daily radio show on the Salem Radio Network. And you got to, let me tell you something, the Salem Radio Network, you don't just get on the Salem yeah. Radio Network. Oh. You have to be somebody. They check. <laughs> or those, have something they, to say. They check what you're going to do. I mean, they yeah, are. They, do. they are careful. They're no joke. They aren't. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Uh, Dallas. You like Dallas? I love Dallas. Do you? Wh which do you like best? The ice storms or the 105 temperature? <laughs> or wh which do you like best? <laughs> I just like it. You know, we. I. I. We actually moved there from Phoenix. So I had my second oh, born yes. son oh, yes. and it was 118 degrees in Phoenix. So when we moved to Seriously, Dallas, I was don't, like, don't this leave is that. so cool. Don't leave you know? that last part out. I wanted to. Okay. You want to say it? She's also a member of the advisory council for the women's ministry department at Liberty University. Yes. That's very important. Worked with Liberty Great. for a lot of years. How did you, how did you connect with them? Uh, I went to Liberty and became friends with um, the director of the women's ministry division there now. And we've just, we buddied up and we've just partnered right. and we've spoke together all over the country. And our, I go there and speak to her kids every our year. Our son went to Liberty. Our daughter went to Liberty. Our granddaughter yeah. uh, graduated from Liberty. And our son-in-law was the, was the, on the football yeah. team. He was like the jock. That's amazing. Yes. My, I, we got a whole line of them too. My parents went. My brother and sister went. My husband went. That's where I met him. So we love Liberty. And actually, yeah. we we yeah. met at a better college. It was Trinity College. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. oh. I got a I got a PR because because a few years ago they honored us with a doctorate, and yeah. both oh. of us. And so so I've got a spotlight Trinity College, and it is it's the one Billy it's Graham went to. Yes. And it was called Florida Bible Institute in Tampa, 
That's and then it was later the name was changed to Trinity. So it's it's that's our background. That's amazing. Yeah. So how did you start out in this uh, women's ministry? How did it happen? Well, I um, actually uh, a little different story. I, I grew up in a Christian home, a pastor's home, and really knew the Bible since birth. I tell people I was born in the nursery because that's how you are as a PK and followed the Lord. But then I met a guy and um, he became abusive and I divorced him. But in that marriage, I found the Lord. It's crazy. A pastor's daughter grow up in church, but oh, you that, find the Lord yeah. in a horrific situation. You know where I found the Lord? Where? Trinity College of Christian College. Really? Yep. Go figure. Yeah. But we, um, I found the Lord in that marriage and I knew that God had called me to share about the truth that he had given me wow. um, in that marriage. And that's where my heart for women's uh -huh. ministry came from. Did he, did he indicate at all that he had that personality? Um, not at first. No abuser indicates that at first. They're very smooth. They're so very, he was very nice. And very nice. Very, uh, very sweet. Everyone sort of loved him. Wow. But um, that's kind of the manipulation of that mind is that they, they, they love on you at first. They kind of win your affection. They win your heart. And then they start turning on um, you and, and, you know, tell you things like, you know, you're ugly or you're fat or you're stupid. And, and you start believing them because they have won your heart. So They've that's control. Control. Very possessive, very controlling. Um, very jealous. Incredibly jealous. Couldn't even talk to people that he didn't approve. Is this your words? If I turn up dead, look at him. That was the first line in, in this yeah. book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that was about two years into my marriage with him. And at that point in my life, I, I was scared of God. The God that my dad preached about every Sunday, I was petrified of him. I was petrified of my husband at that time. I was petrified of myself mm -hmm. and had sort of thought, what is my life worth? It's worth nothing. You know, we, we hear suicide a lot in our world today. A lot of celebrities lately have committed suicide. And I understand. I understand how you get to a point where you have nothing and you count yourself as nothing. And so I actually um, took my sister out to ice cream and uh, looked at her. And for the first time, because I had counted my life as nothing, and I knew if I told her, um, and something happened. Did she um, think everything okay? was okay? Yes. I said, if I, that's the first thing I said to her. If I turn up dead, look to him first. And she was like eating her mint chocolate chip. <laughs> I was yeah. like, yeah, that's what I said. So she stopped and looked at me and she was like, what's going on? Wow. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I had believed in my mind, um, you know, that that was a possibility for me at that point. So when, yes. Now, you know, the talent that you've obviously blossomed now that you've gotten your life together. What, so you had none of that going on when you were married? No, none of it. I mean, I, I was a leader in high school. I mean, I- Even I, while married to him? Um, actually, yes, because you're, because abuse victims are excellent actors. Okay. I was great at faking it. Okay. Um, everything's so, okay. Everything's okay. He's okay. He's just having a bad day. He's just having, everything's fine. You're just having a bad day. It's okay. Did you have any bruises? Okay. Uh, no, no. Um, you'll, you'll find, especially in an abuse of situation, you know, they find that, w that when they hurt you, they're very strategic about where. Um, so no, I didn't. But, um, sort of interacting with a mind like that, they, they will teach you to protect them. Um, if you, if you say anything to anyone about how you're being treated, you know, I'll kill myself. You know, he, he threatened that about himself before. And so I was constantly living under this fear of, I just can't tell anybody. And children during this? No, no, no kids. So. Well, that was a blessing. It was a blessing. It was a blessing. When did you finally wake up one day? I'm moving. I'm, I'm out of this. I, I can't put up with it. I mean, cause that took strength, you know, the size of, I can't imagine. It was ama amazing. Now, I, I told you, I told my sister, um, sat down and had ice cream and told her uh, that line, if I turn up dead, look to him first. And it was a little while after that, at 3 a.m. in the morning when I was planning my own death um, because I couldn't sleep. I was terrified that God, as I was planning my death, God spoke to me. I know the spirit of God spoke so loud and said, do you remember me? 
And although I wouldn't call myself a believer before then, I knew then mm -hmm. that my creator was talking to me. It drew me out of bed and um, I was, I, I offered up the most rebellious prayer I have ever prayed. I just said, I don't believe in you. Sometimes, you know, even though it's rebellious, it's authentic. Oh, yeah. And God finally yeah. gets yeah. to the heart yeah. of us where we have nothing, that we're not whitewashed. We don't have anything plastic. And, and that's the way I was last night. I don't believe in you. I don't, I don't know why you would allow this to happen in my life. But if you just happen to be real, you got to speak and you got to speak now. And I had this old blue Bible that I never opened because I was afraid it was going to take me to Leviticus where he, God kills everybody. And I was just <laughs> terrified of the Bible. And I just did a Bible flip open. It took me to Psalm 91 where he says, the righteous will have long life or with long life, I will satisfy him. And only the spirit of God knew that I was planning my own death, terrified my husband was going to kill me and thought God was going to kill me too. And in that moment, it created such an awareness. And I, I just, I feel like my soul awoke for the first time because I recognized I was not dealing with a myth. I was dealing with the creator of the universe that had met me that night at 3 a.m. So I fell on the floor um, sobbing in repentance. Was, I'm he like, there? was he in the room? He was sleeping in the, in the next bedroom. I fell on the floor, just repentance. Because then I'm like, I can't believe I just prayed that. What in the world is wrong with me? but rose after hours of just sobbing, a champion for the Lord. And it was that night where God be, began to build my faith in him. You know, we, ha we have to build our faith. We can't just walk around saying we have this huge faith. I, I would say things as simple as, God, if you're real, and I know that you are, so help me out here. Will you have a guy with a blue shirt walk in the gas station? And I would be like checking out and there'd be a black guy with a blue shirt walk up and it would build my faith a little bit. And then I would say, God, if you're real, would you just have, you know, oranges be on sale? Like little tiny things. And I walk into the supermarket and they would be on sale. And little by little, I started building my trust wow. in God, um, which, which has continued be, to be built. So that the security that wasn't in autumn, that wasn't in how I could talk to people or my gifts, my security and my courage to leave came from the stability of trust that I built on God's word. That's the only way you and, can learn. And, th and then we move into I am Rahab. Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> really? Yes, I am. So are you. You got to read the book. <laughs> I, know. I did. But I'm pretending like, you know, I'm, yes, yes. I'm feeding you what you've got in the book. I, you know, so as I, I, I'm a student of God's word, it's, it's my food. I'm obsessed with like a nugget that I haven't heard from God's word that I learned. And a couple of years ago, um, you know, I love Mary. I mean, how so respected in the scripture. But me personally, I couldn't identify her. I can respect her, but couldn't really identify with her. I looked to Esther in the scripture. She's amazing, but I couldn't personally identify with her. And then I found Rahab the harlot. <laughs> And I'm like, Rahab the harlot. In and the she Bible. lied. And she lied and she was a harlot. And yeah. I'm like, there's my girl right <laughs> there, you know? <laughs> and I started just inductively studying her life in Jericho and her role in um, the deliverance of Israel. And it was, I mean, fire. I, had, I, I just had so much fire of passion for her story. And I found my girl. I found and, my girl. And you said, God doesn't always use perfect people. That's right. We can't all be Mary's. Um, some of us are Rahab's. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think th uh, that is a very common misconception that we've struggled with yeah. for years. Yeah. Um, but I feel like Rahab the harlot, every time she's mentioned in scripture, she's called Rahab the harlot. And Bible scholars have tried to sanitize her and take out the harlot yeah. because they just couldn't stand And they try the to fact. take out the lie. And they try to take out the lie. They say that she was an innkeeper. Yeah. She wasn't. Yeah. She was a harlot. Yeah. She, people paid her for sexual yeah. favors. You can't take that out. And yet God didn't want to use her. He chose her. Yeah. Uh, he didn't want to use her like some of her lovers. And he chose you. He chose her, and he chose me as well. Yes, mm -hmm. and he chose you as well, yes. and everyone right. watching. That's right. Well, okay, take us on the journey now, how, how this is your catalyst to do what you're doing today. Um, you know, when I when I found that out, uh, what, what, well, but take it back to 3 a.m. in the morning, I knew 
I, I am passionate about everything. I'm passionate about the Lord. I'm passionate about pizza. You we know, never know that. Just passionate about, just passionate about everything. Yeah. You know, passionate about my husband. I'm passionate about the book. Um, She's got a, quite a husband. But, he is yes. good looking. Go, on, go on the YouTube and you'll find him. Yes, he is amazing. Um, but I knew I couldn't do anything else but preach the word of God and tell people about the transformation that he made in my life. Now, now you, you, you're kind of back, Baptist background. Baptist background, okay. yes. Grew up Baptist. And, and women don't preach in Baptist churches. Yeah. So, yeah, they do. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> At women conferences, they yeah. definitely do. But, but, but I mean, I, I, did that, did that in the back of your mind go, oh my goodness, I'm supposed to preach and my background is Liberty University and because I always thought it was kind of funny they Baptists use mi uh, women missionaries mm -hmm. and they come on and testify what they've spoken to you know in these foreign lands or whatever and I'm going now wait a minute how does that coincide with no preaching yes and, and they teach Sunday school classes mm -hmm. and do all kinds of leadership how does that coincide with no preaching but you figured it out. Well, yeah. I mean, I think being a pastor and preaching are two different things. You know, if you if you look at the context of the word of God, Rahab influenced men. That's what she did. God God chose her to influence men, the spies, the leaders of the nation of Israel to come in. So um, we have to separate the pastor from the pr from the preaching and the teaching. And um, I have been invited by many Baptist churches to come in and share with their people, share my story of redemption and um, to their women and uh, on stage. So it's it's been a great blessing. When so you get back to that three o'clock in the morning. Yes. Then. What, what gave you, did that give you the courage then to confront your husband at that particular time or? Yes, yes, exactly. So when I found out God was real, mm -hmm. I figured out <laughs> at that moment, the word of God must be true. And if he says he's never going to leave me or, or, or forsake me, if he says, you know, be strong and courageous, I was going to do just that because for the first time in my life, I was centered. And um, when I confronted my husband a year later, you know, at, at that moment at 3 a.m. in the morning, my circumstances didn't change. I was in my same circumstances, but I had changed. And a year later, I was able to look at him very straight in the eye. I'd actually just been to Liberty University to uh, visit my brother and sister there and came back from a trip and just said, you don't have control over me anymore. And that was not autumn. That was the strength and the courage of God that he had built in me in that year of just listening, learning, and devouring his word. So you didn't know how he was going to react to that? No, but it didn't matter. <laughs> That's really what gives me the courage to do what I do today, because yeah. you, you can't worry so much about how someone's going to react. Yeah. You have to worry about obedience. Rahab did that. Uh, she didn't worry about the reaction. Yeah. She worried about obeying the God that she heard, heard so much about. If we cared more about obeying immediately rather than a reaction, the world would be different. I, I, I know it would. And that's what I did that night. But did you, did you have any fear about going out on your own because you've been under this kind of controlling husband for so long? What, did you have fear about that? I was terrified. I was terrified of everything. How am I going to make it on my own? How yeah. am I going to... Basically, all the lies that he had told me, mm -hmm. I had believed as truth. Um, so how was I going to pay for anything? What was I going to do? But little by little, God started confronting the lies through his word in my life. He, I, I would believe a lie one day. I'm, I'm just terrified that no one's going to love me. And then he would bring me a scripture that totally contradicts the lie that I was believing. When I met my husband, um, Where did we, you meet? we struggled with that. Uh, Liberty University. Liberty. Wow. <laughs> he was one of the first guys that I met there. Yeah. Yeah. This is like a Liberty commercial today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Call 1-800. Yeah. Wow. But I met him and he was so sweet. Um, he is, he's got such a, a kind countenance about him. He's, he's tough, but he, he's very, very sweet. And I remember looking at him and going, you're not this good. Like, you're not, there's no way. There's no way you're as good as you're telling me. <laughs> and uh, I mean, and I was just, I was authentic, yeah. very authentic with him. And he was like, it's okay. It's okay. You know, no, I'm not. I'm a sinner. I'm like, yeah, you are somewhere in there. I'm going to find yeah. it. Yeah. But 14 years so later. So you had in your mind, maybe all men were like the one. Absolutely. I, I, I had a perception about every man mm -hmm. um, that, that had built up in my mind. I talk about this in the book 
when the Israelites go in to possess the promised land, God told Moses, you have to dispossess the nations first before you possess. Yeah. And I woke up one day and I was wondering why my current husband was frustrating me so much. He would, he would surprise me with flowers and I would react in terror. He would surprise me with like a card and I would like all of a sudden get really insecure. And I, I was wondering why, because what he was doing was nice, but it, it, it just wasn't, it, it wasn't working. And God brought this, this uh, idea to my mind, you know, Israel had to defeat Jericho first before they could possess. And I hadn't defeated Jericho's of triggers in my mind that were keeping me from fully possessing an incredible marriage with a man who wanted nothing more than to love me. So I had to do the work of dispossessing Jericho's of fear, of frustration, of insecurity, because I had a lot of them build up because of my past. Wow. Do you meet a lot of women just like you out there when you're speaking to these women's groups? Yes, I love women. I love them so much. Um, I, I actually say a lot, I do, I do what I do for every woman that's just like me, um, that's not perfect, that wakes up and her breast stinks in the morning. Um, I, I, I want to reach them, but I, all the time, we get thousands of emails, messages on Facebook, um, Instagram, uh, it, it, all sorts of communication that says, Autumn story is my story. Autumn story is my story. Mm -hmm. And with one in four women um, being involved in domestic violence of some sort and one in seven men, uh, you don't see women walking around telling people that they're involved in domestic violence. It's a very secret thing, but they'll email a stranger and say, please help me. Um, and so yes, we see every day, we see it every day. And we're able to help every woman um, that reaches out to us. Does the Lord speak to you? Yes. Because throughout your book, <laughs> you talk about many instances. For example, you were on a trip yeah. and you told someone, maybe it was somebody living or taking care of your children, that you wanted your, your child to be checked because you were concerned, hives, mm -hmm. and you were concerned that, that he was okay. Yeah. So you, you did a FaceTime mm -hmm. and, and you looked at the FaceTime and what happened? Oh, it's one of my most emotional stories in the book. Um, and you were in a, in a motel a way, way. I was traveling to yeah. do a TV yeah. uh, just like this, yes. uh, somebody somewhere else. And my husband went with me that time. He's never been with me on a trip. And he was like, I'm going to go this time. And my son, Moses, who's three years old, he had had hives the day before. And um, I was concerned about him, but not too concerned. We've got four kids, you know. Yeah. I yeah. mean, you never know with yeah. four kids. Th they'll be okay. Give them some Benadryl. The first one you're real careful the with. The first one you're... After that, you just... Oh, After yeah. four, yeah. you know, you're like, you're yeah. eating candy yeah. for breakfast. Have some more. It'll yeah. be fine. Yeah. You know, it's totally right. fine. Um, but yes, we had gone up to the hotel. It was three hours from where he was. And I had FaceTime my daughter, Gray. She's 12. And I just said, mommy's here. I'll see you in the morning. It'll be really short. I'll be right back. Hung up the phone and God said to me, call her back and FaceTime Moses and say, I want to see his face. And so at 11 o'clock at night to a 12 year old, I FaceTime her and I said, listen, baby, this is crazy, but you know, mom's a little crazy. Um, take the phone. I have to see Moses's face. She showed me his face and he was swollen like a balloon everywhere. Whoa. And I said, baby, trying not to freak out, go get your grandma and papa, that's where they were staying, rush him to the hospital. If it was a couple minutes later, he would be dead. So I, <laughs> that is- What was wrong? He, he had a bad reaction to something. We still don't know what it was that we've had him My tested goodness. and everything. Bad reaction and- But you were but I was so listening. in tune. I was Lord. listening, yes, I, uh, the Spirit of God is our number one resource. It is not number two, number six, number 10. It is our number one resource. It is the Spirit of the living God. When we listen, that's how we uh, conquer our Jerichos. That's how we have success. That, that's how we're warned. That's how we're told about promises. That's how we're told. So I have learned over the years not to doubt, but to trust. Don't, don't second guess, act. And if I hadn't have acted at that very moment, he would be dead. Wow. 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 
That's Autumn, amazing. we've got three minutes, whatever. Oh, okay. That's, that's your camera right okay. there. A lot of women out there that are watching. Yes. You know, we, we're all over satellite, all. I know, I did my All over the country. <laughs> so this is, this is an opportunity to be on this platform. Jesus. And share Christ with someone or whatever the Lord tells you to do. Mm -hmm. Hi. Um, I just want to let you know I love you. I love you. I am so passionate Amen. about your future. And not just me. The God of the universe is real. Just like I shared earlier. Not only is he real, his word is true. And it changed my life. One line from God's word changed my life. And I get the sense right now that you are listening, you are tuned in, you're like Rahab the harlot, that's me. Okay, <laughs> Autumn the divorcee, I get that. I can connect with that. And I wanna tell you, you do not have to stay the way that you are. There is a God that died for you. His spirit is waiting to come and to live inside of you via uh, the crucifixion of our King Jesus Christ. I want you to know, God has a future for you, a plan for you. He will put your life back together. He will change it in such a way that you will look back years later and say, I'm not even the same person. Mm -hmm. I want you to accept a relationship with him. And if you faltered and maybe you accepted as a young child, I want you to rededicate your life to Christ. He is the reason to live yes. and he is the hope for your life. This is your opportunity. Uh, you've got about one minute left. Pray with somebody. Mm, thank you, Jesus. So, Lord, <clears throat> oh, great God. God, I just, I cry out, I intercede on behalf of that woman that is struggling, on behalf of that man even that is struggling today. And Lord, we ask for your transforming power, the spirit of the living God to overwhelm them in this moment, to remind them who they are in you, to remind them how much you love them. You love them so much that you sacrificed your son for them. Lord, I pray right now that they would see hope, they would feel hope, they would understand that their future is full of hope. There is hope for their children. There is hope for their new job. There is hope for their finances. There is hope for their marriage. Lord, you are hope. And so God of the universe, I ask for you to interject that in every single listener today because we know that you will do exactly as we ask. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Get your copy. The website, go to that website, find all the information for speaking engagements. If you would like to have her, this is your opportunity. Mm. God bless you. Bye-bye.